Hey guys, it's Mega Robert from Mega Robert TV, and today I'm going to be reviewing parts 11 and 12 of the Mega Man Sonic Worlds Collide crossover. And guys, here we are. We've gone full circle. Uh, the crossover is done, I guess. But I have to say, a lot of people were saying that the crossover felt dragged out and long. I personally had an awesome time reading it. It was so fun to see the stories unfold and just see the two franchises come together. I had an awesome time reviewing the comics. I hope you guys liked my reviews. And I'm not done with comic reviews though for these two series, but I'll explain what I mean by that at the end of this video when I'm done with um, reviewing the two parts. But here we go. On that note, let's get into part 11. So part 11 is basically the fight between Mega Man and Sonic and Metal Sonic and Bass. So let's be honest, the heroes are kind of on the losing end of this fight. They just can't fight the, off the villains that have been giving them so much trouble over the years. So as they're losing, Sonic approaches Mega Man and goes, dude, I have an idea. How about we do the whole mix and match thing and I'll take on base and you fight Metal Sonic and we'll just get it over like that because they're built to beat us at our own game but they can't beat anyone else. So Mega Man goes, that's a pretty good idea. So they fight like that and they fail. It doesn't work like that. Metal Sonic and base are still too powerful for them. So uh, Mega Man uh, approaches Sonic and he's like, it works every time, huh? And Sonic's just like, oh, that's cute. You were programmed with sarcasm. So that's kind of funny. They're still throwing jokes out there, even though it's really a dramatic moment. That's what I like about Archie. So Sonic, uh, in the story, basically just is just like, I have another idea. Let's use all the weapons you've used uh, from the roboticized masters, and let's just attack one of them at a time, and you just go all out with all your different powers. So Mega Man agrees that that's a great idea. They try it, and it works out perfectly. I gotta say, Ben Bates' art when Mega Man is changing weapons and using them is really awesome in this issue. Because as he uses a specific weapon, the original owner appears behind him in kind of like spirit, sort of. They're not really there, but it looks like it a little. It's really cool. I definitely appreciate I don't know if that was Ian Flynn's idea or Ben Bates just came up with it. I think that was an awesome concept. Glad they kept it. So they basically beat Metal Sonic and Base, and now it's time for them to finally fight the Doctors. But the Doctors break into the room right before they even got a chance to react with the Egg Wily Machine X, which is the big final boss machine that they both have. And they just shoot Mega Man and Sonic with this huge laser, and the two get knocked out. So when they wake up a little bit later, they're uh, tr uh, trapped in little capsules and now they're basically weak against anything Wily and Eggman do. Dr. Eggman and Dr. W uh, Wily uh, finally uh, reveal their master plan, the big plan they've been planning ever since the beginning. Uh, they said the roboticized masters were kind of, of um, a fallback plan and it wasn't the main goal to just roboticize Sonic's friends. They, what they wanted to do was supercharge the Genesis wave and Mega Man is just like, why would you want to supercharge the Genesis wave? You've already re uh, written our worlds. You have no purpose to further go into it. And Dr. Wily and Eggman are just like, yeah, we do. Because with the original Genesis wave they used in the first part of the crossover, they only used one Chaos Emerald. And with that Chaos Emerald, they could only tweak the timelines a little bit. Like, they could only move things here and there. They really couldn't delete anyone from all reality. But now with the Super Genesis Wave, they can build everything from the bottom up and just recreate everything. And then the comic finishes off with them going, and once we erase you two from reality, there's going to be no one to stop us. And that's where part 11 leaves you off. I think that is awesome. That is the best cliffhanger that you could do to lead up to the final part. I mean, that is so epic. So now we're on part 12. And part 12, of course, leaves off where part 11 did, where Mega Man and Sonic are basically at the mercy of Wily and Eggman. And back on the battlefield of the Skull Egg Zone, uh, Dr. Light and everyone else is still fighting for their lives against the evil robot masters that have been time cloned. So the two, ro um, the whole group is fighting the robot masters, but out of nowhere, uh, the original Dr. Light robot masters come and uh, get ready for battle to save the day. 
I am so happy they actually brought those characters back because as I mentioned in my part 9 and 10 review, um, they didn't have those robot masters right uh, from the get-go from part 9. So I, uh, I was confused why they didn't bring them back, but they did now, so that's awesome. So the robot masters tell Dr. Light and uh, Proto Man and uh, Knuckles to go up to the Wily to help the blue heroes and they'll handle things from here. So Dr. Light, Proto Man and um, Knuckles go up to the Wily just in time and they release um, Mega Man and Sonic from the capsules. So the heroes are freed, the doctors are all panicking now because the heroes are free. And uh, Rush does an awesome fusion with Mega Man and Mega Man uh, puts on the super adapter that he had uh, from Mega Man 6 and Mega Man 7. So now that Mega Man's fused with Rush, he goes, well, I'm a super Mega Man now. And Sonic's like, super, huh? That gives me an idea. So the heroes kind of disappear off, uh, coming up with their next strategy. And um, Proto Man and Knuckles uh, attack Dr. Wily and Eggman while they're inside the Egg Wily Machine X. So you'd expect for the machine to turn on and them just destroying everything. But as they try to turn it on, the machine doesn't work. And then... Wily and Eggman are like, oh no, because they're like, you sabotaged me. Eggman sabotaged Wily, and Wily sabotaged Eggman's side of the controls to try to get back at them, but it worked bad because they both did it at the same time, so they turned the whole machine off. And that was uh, kind of a big mistake on their part, because Knuckles just is like destroying the machine and stuff. So when we get back to Mega Man and Sonic now, um, the two heroes uh, are next to the Chaos Emeralds and they absorb the Chaos Energy. And it is so awesome because they become super. They reach their super forms. M uh, Sonic gets his gold fur and stuff as Super Sonic. And Mega Man is, uh, has a golden armor now as Super Mega Man. And now they're ready to just fight off the Doctors and save their world. So that is like the absolute peak of this issue. But it just gets better from there. Because the Super Genesis wave uh, has been activated. It's still going on and still rewriting the world as they speak. So as that's going on, they kind of end up in space. Sort of, not really space, but the Skull Egg Zone is somewhat deleted. Everything's getting rewritten. So uh, they use their super forms to destroy the Egg Wily Machine X. And Wily and Eggman are basically just left in the rubble and then... Wily, at this point, he just gives up. He's like, Ivo, you know, we really have to stop this. It's, it's over. So, um, Sonic and Mega Man uh, are using chaos control. They each have their own orb of chaos energy to rewrite each one of their universes. So, Mega Man rewrites his and Sonic rewrites his. But as they're ready to shoot off their uh, beams to save their worlds, Eggman just flies into Sonic with oh, whatever's left of the Egg Wily machine. And then Mega Man's panicking, he's like, Sonic, are you okay? And Sonic, he, this part is just so epic. <laughs> Sonic's just like, no, Mega Man, don't come and save me. You have to save your family and your friends. You have to save your world. So Mega Man's like, thank you, Sonic, for being such a friend or something like that. And he shoots his laser and Mega Man's world is back to normal. Mega Man disappears because his world is just saved. So that's awesome. I'm glad Mega Man's safe. But Sonic still hasn't rewritten his world yet, and Sonic's just like, Eggman, let me go. You, you don't know what you're doing. Just let me finish this off and just let our world be normal. And then Eggman's like, no, if I can't have the world my way, you're not going to have it your way. So he basically shoots the chaos energy that Sonic was controlling. And unlike how Mega Man changed his world back, where uh, it was a white flash, completely normal, the world literally explodes, like cracks into glass almost. It's just insane. It just explodes. And then the last thing Sonic says is, What have you done, Eggman? And then everything flashes to white, and the crossover ends. That was insane. That ending blew my mind. Because I thought it was just going to be like one of those happy ending crossover whatevers. Like Mega Man and Sonic are just like, Hey, we're best friends. Let's go back to our normal worlds. That's it, you know? But no, they left that at a cliffhanger where Mega Man's world saved, but... Is Sonic alive? Is Sonic okay? Is What happened to the world? Did it get destroyed? Deleted? Who knows? It, can Mega Man still help Sonic at this point? That's where it drops the crossover. And a lot of people were complaining about this because um, 
what they are going to do, what uh, most people think they're going to do. I don't know if this is 100% confirmed. Uh, they're going to re, uh, reboot the Sonic series, which means they're starting over again. So people were complaining. They're like, oh my gosh, did they just use the crossover to um, as an excuse to reboot Sonic? Was that really the only point? And so many people were complaining. And I was just like, no guys, the crossover is fan service. The crossover was for all us nerds out there that just enjoy the comic series and they just love it. That's what the crossover was for. The fact that they're rebooting Sonic along with it has nothing really to do with it. Or it, Story-wise, it does, but outside of that, that's not what the crossover was for. So I am just, I enjoyed the crossover so much. But the thing is, I'm not ready to let go of Sonic yet. I was gonna, after I finished these reviews, I was gonna keep doing the Mega Man reviews and uh, just leave it at that, keep reviewing Mega Man, but not Sonic. But now that Sonic is, world has just been left at a cliffhanger, I gotta keep reading those. So I am going to keep reviewing the Mega Man comics completely through. And Sonic, I am definitely going to review the next arc, Countdown to Chaos. Definitely reviewing that. The rebooted Sonic series, I don't know if I'll review it, but I probably will because I do enjoy Sonic now. Um, I can't confirm that yet though, but definitely Sonic and Mega Man will still be on this channel for a long time to come. So don't worry guys, Mega Robert TV is still here for your Archie Comics needs. And this crossover was awesome. I guess it's time to give my final impressions over the whole thing. I definitely love this crossover. It was awesome. Um, Unlike most comic book uh, stories, you could say there are parts that kind of fall flat compared to the uh, other parts, but I don't think so. The comic kept up a steady pace throughout the whole thing. The first arc was the beginning, the middle arc kind of showed the rest of the story, and the final arc ended in an awesome cliffhanger. So the crossover kept a great pace of pure awesomeness <laughs> throughout this whole four months that it was out. So I think it's awesome. I don't have any complaints really with the crossover in any way. If I did, they would just be unnecessary nitpicks. What I kind of, uh, not disliked, but kind of wanted to see though, was Mega Man Sonic kind of say their goodbyes at the end. Like uh, maybe that's a bit, um, I'm trying too hard to make it into like a Disney movie ending, but I kind of want Mega Man Sonic to be like, uh, I respect you as a fellow hero, all this stuff. You know, I want to see them maybe shake hands at the end and then reset their worlds to normal. But who knows? Maybe they'll meet again. I, I have no idea. Maybe with Countdown to Chaos, the Mega Man comes back or something. That's a bit of an exaggeration, but who knows? Maybe Mega Man and Sonic will meet again. I'd love, I'd love to see that. Uh, whether it be in a video game again or whether it's a sequel to Worlds Collide. This crossover was good, and that's when you know it's great. Where Mega Man and Sonic, they're completely two different heroes from two different companies, only met by fate at Archie Comics. And the fact that they mix so well, that like they, they're like the best of partners that I've ever seen. Like there's Batman and Robin, and all these other superhero duos, but Mega Man and Sonic is so awesome, and they're not even the part of the same franchise. So I just have to congratulate Archie Comics. You guys made the best crossover ever. This will be like the highlights of the comic book industry for uh, like for time to come because it is just so awesome. These comics are awesome. So I'll definitely be around to review Mega Man and Sonic after this. But uh, yeah, it's awesome. So this is Mega Robert signing off.